Okay, grade 12s, we are now going to look at the cash flow statement. It's going to be a brief overview, and I'm going to break it into three different sections. But I do want you to see the bigger picture as it is here in front of you. Before I start with the actual detail, let's just go back and ask the question, why are we doing a cash flow statement? Well, first of all, we had an income statement. Income statement or statement of comprehensive income. We did, we've been doing since grade 10, and you know right at the bottom is the whole purpose of it, to work out, did I make a profit or did I make a loss? In this instance, in this example, it's 295,920. But you will find when we're busy with the cash flow statement, we actually look at the cash. And there's accounts like depreciation that didn't involve actual cash. And therefore, we're going to have to adjust this net profit that we thought we made. And then also there's things like interest expense. This is not actually for the operation of the business. This is more for financing our business an expense that would be separate. And then there would also be a loss of asset disposal. This is not the actual running day to day of the business. This is just something that happens every now and then when we are selling an asset. So there's some expenses here that we might have to adjust and make sure we adjust this number that we do refer to actual cash that was received. So that's the first thing why we can't just look at this number 295,920. If we go to the balance sheet, which we've also done since grade 10, what was the purpose of this one? This one was to see your financial position. It's a statement of your financial position. Taking your assets and looking at the equity and liabilities, balancing it to your A equals O plus L. But at the end of the day, it's looking at the health and how healthy is the business. And this one is a snapshot of the business on one particular day and where we're standing. So what the cash flow statement then comes and do or does when it comes in, look my beautiful English. Yes, I'm trying here. Yeah. Is it going to break down some transactions to see how's the cash coming in and the cash flowing out? So we'll actually tell you specifically about the cash. How did it come into the business and how did it go out of the business? So I, I'm looking in your textbooks at some theory. If you want to join me, there's a heading that says the format of the cash flow statement, and then they break it down into three sections, and then they explain the theory as I would do now. It's a little bit more detailed in your textbook. So let's start with the top one, this peach orange block at the top, cash flow from operating activities. This one is probably the most important part, and this is operating, meaning your operations, your day-to-day -day income that you earn, and mainly relates to the main purpose of your business, making money. So right at the top, we've got first cash generating from your operations, and this will start off with your net profit, and you'll see there'll be some calculations involved with that one, but mainly your net profit adjusted a little bit. This is a different exercise. I'm just using some random numbers here. Then they also refer to interest that you pay, dividends that you pay, and tax that you pay as regular operating activities, day-to-day -day amounts going in and out. Within this number one, I do want to mention, though, that there's also things like debtors, creditors, and your stock. Let's go to the next part, which is the blue section, investing. That is the key word here, investing. How's cash being invested. So first of all, if you are buying land and buildings, if you are buying vehicles or equipment, they're seeing it as investment because this could generate money for you. But it's a bracket, meaning your cash is flowing out. So whenever cash is flowing in, like for example, the top cash generation, it's a positive. When money is flowing out, it's brackets, it's a negative. So look at the second one for investing. When I'm selling off a non-current asset and I do make some cash off it, then this will probably go in here as a plus. Money is flowing into the business. And lastly, if it increases an in investment, so this would be a fixed deposit or if you're buying shares in another company, 
then your money will go down and therefore the cash is done in brackets. Remember, this is a brief overview. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes that we'll get to as we do each, each section. The third section, financing. This is basically asking where you're getting your money from. Now, if you think of your debt equity ratio, is your money coming from the owners or is it borrowed? So here's some of the money coming from the owners and some of it could be borrowed. So if you look at the first example here, proceeds from issuing of your share capital. So you're going to issue more shares. This is all coming from owners, a nice plus money coming in. If I'm repurchasing shares, remember the company is now buying the shares, my cash will go down. Even though this might be good for the business because your EPS and your DPS will increase because you'll have less shares. But at the end of the day, the cash was flowing out of the business. And finally, if you are borrowing money, a long-term loan, in this example, you receive the long-term loan and therefore it's a plus. But remember, if you're paying back the actual capital of the loan, then this will be in brackets. So it's all dependent if the money is going in or if the money is going out. And finally, just the bottom, where we're looking at your actual cash and cash equivalents, what's going on there. And this relates to your balance sheet. Mainly the first one I would fill in is in the middle. It actually says, watch my cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year. And I would fill that in. And then you will look at the answer from wherever you calculated from these three sections. Meaning, take your cash flow from operating. Then if you have to have a, if there's a bracket, you'll have to minus it. And this one, in this case, is a positive. Remember, that can vary depending what's going on in your business at the time. So I take 1.1, take the 2 million minus, and I plus another 866. And my answer at the bottom is 19,000 Rand. So I've calculated that with the three sections answers. And then I'll say 19 plus 51, and that gives my cash that's sitting in my bank account now, which comes to 70,000. 